Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. This video is going to be a demonstration of my new product, Pyrotone. This product is extremely easy to use once you get to know how it works, and you can create some beautiful, realistic, fiery effects around your text or your logo. So let's get started. Quick disclaimer actually, this product will only work if you have the latest version of Photoshop, as of this recording at least, which is Photoshop CC 2023. So I would highly recommend just updating your Photoshop to that version, but if you can't for some reason, then I included a kind of troubleshooting or a workaround for this at the end of the video. So if you have an older version of Photoshop or you just find that the product's not working, go ahead and check that part of the video out. And without further ado, let's get into this demonstration. So first things first, you're gonna wanna install all the presets. Once you download Pirate Phone, it'll come in this folder. And you can see that there is a folder for if you have a Mac and if you have a PC. I'm working on a Mac, so I'm going to click on this Mac folder, and you're going to want to install all of these presets. So you can do so just by following the PDF tutorial that's in here, or I'll show you real quick, it's real easy. You open basically each of the windows for these respective presets in Photoshop and install it from there. So I'll do one example real quick for these brushes. We'll open up the brushes window by going into Window Brushes and then going to this top right menu bar here and then we're going to go down to import brushes and from here you're just going to want to find where that tone file is and it's the same deal for the rest of these presets but if you get lost make sure you just follow that pdf tutorial that's included in here so once we have all the presets installed we're ready to actually use pyrotone first step i would say is when you make your document or whatever document you're working in make sure that it is in 300 dpi or higher, but I would recommend 300 dpi. The lowest I would say you could go to is 144 or somewhere around. But if you want the effect to be in its full glory, make sure your document is in 300 dpi. So I'm gonna create this and I'm gonna turn the background black just cause that's what the effect works best with. And I'm gonna go and add a logo in here. So I've got this test logo in here and I wanna get it pyro toned. Where do I start? Well, it's pretty simple. I have five pyro actions in here. Each kind of give you a different fiery effect and I actually included in the folder for this, this product, PDF file, which you can open and see which each of the fiber effects yields, just because, I mean, it's easier to, you know, see it visually. And then also each of the effects kind of takes sort of long, depending on your, depending how fast your computer is. So it's just easy to refer to this and then decide which effect you want for your design. So let's go through a few of them one by one, and I'm just gonna demonstrate how this works. So once our logo is in here, all we're gonna do is click on one of these five pyro actions and run whichever one. So I'm gonna do the pyro 01 first, click play. All right, cool. So this is what we end up with. As you can see, it's pretty fucking cool. We got some great fiery effects going on. We got some real good glow going on here. And that glow effect is indeed modular. So if you wanna mess with it, you can open up the smart object here by double clicking on the layer thumbnail and going into here. And just so we can see this better, I'm gonna add a black background real quick. But yeah, so we have six of these glow partitions here, which just like if you're familiar with Chrome Tone, each of these kind of progressively builds on the glow. So if you turn them all off, there's no glow, and then turn them on, turn them on one by one, and you progressively build this glow out. And then we also have this color adjustment on top, which affects the color of the glow. So right now it's set to sort of a reddish tone. If we turn that off, you can see it's more neutral but i keep it on just because i like the the reddish tint that it adds to the glow but yeah so if you want to mess with the glow the option is there let's go back to our original document okay cool so what about these other actions here the sparks and the smoke and the final adjustments at the bottom it's pretty self-explanatory add smoke add smoke add sparks add sparks and the final adjustment you would run after you add all that just to get a cleaner look to your image so i'm gonna go ahead and run the add smoke action just to show you how it looks Let's go ahead and click that and click play. Cool, so we've got our smoke here and you can see it's a pretty tasteful effect by default, but if you do wanna mess with it, you can open up this folder right here and we have the coloring, which right now it's tinted, I believe, kind of reddish. And there's a levels adjustment if let's say you want to make the smoke brighter or darker, that's up to you. And then we have the actual smoke effect down here, which I wouldn't recommend playing with, but if you're an experienced Photoshop user and you want to give it a shot, go ahead. But otherwise, that is the add smoke effect. So now let's move on to the sparks. So there's two sparks actions. There's one for large sparks and one for tiny sparks. 
which is also self-explanatory. Just make sure that when you run this action, you have your get pyrotone layer selected and not the smoke. So let's go ahead and run, let's say the tiny sparks action. So let's click on that and then press play. Cool, so this is pretty quickly. These are the sparks that appear on the graphic after you run that action. Also a pretty tasteful effect, but again, if you wanna customize it, the option is there with the coloring and the levels in case you wanna mess with any of that. My upstairs neighbor has decided to play guitar, but that's all right, cause he's kind of good at it. But anyway, this effect is modular, and if you wanna go in here and let's say you want more sparks, this layer mask pretty much controls that. If I were to turn that off, you could see we get more sparks, but I have this in place here just so it renders a bit more of a tasteful effect. But yeah, so let's also run the large sparks action and see what that looks like. Cool, so these are the large sparks. You can pick whichever one you want, the tiny or the large at your will, whatever fits your graphic best or how you can mix and match if you want. But once you're done with this and you're ready to add some final adjustments, all you're gonna do is select all of these layers. So the smoke, the sparks, and the original power tone layer. Click on this final adjustments action and click play. Cool, so this just turned it into a small object and ran some filters through just to give it more of a fine tuned effect that everything is still intact and editable. So if you go into the small object here, you have all your original layers. And then if you wanna edit the glow still, let's say you can go into this small object here and you're like two small objects down by now, but it's still editable. And you can save all this and it would update the the fire, the pyrotone logo in the original document. So the video pretty much ends here for those who are running the correct Photoshop version. So I hope you enjoy this effect and I really appreciate you supporting me. If you bought it already and if not, I highly recommend you buy this. It's a great tool to have in your toolkit. And yeah, thank you even just for watching. You're free to like and subscribe. If you are running a version that's not Photoshop 2023, I'm now gonna show you the workaround to get this product working on your Photoshop. So let's dive in here a bit. The problem is most likely that the, uh, the script for the flame, the flame renderer, the flame in the filter render flame, the Photoshop script for that is not being found by the action. And that is probably because Adobe is really stupid and they had, they had action reference the direct file path rather than just running the script, whatever it is on, on the user's computer. So if we go into this part of the action here, and we're gonna make this a bit wider just so we can see. But yeah, so you can see that it's running this script and I have that script in this exact location. So it's working for me. If it's not working for you, it is because you don't have the script in this exact location. But fortunately, there is a workaround for this. And that is why I included this folder in the Pyrotone product. It's called not working, self-explanatory. So we're gonna open this up and there's a workaround fix right here for the Mac and one for the PC. I'm currently running a Mac, so I'm gonna do this for Mac users, but I'll also show you how to do it on PC. So I'm gonna open this folder for Mac right here. And as you can see, we have a Adobe Photoshop 2023 folder. It is not the full version of Photoshop, otherwise I'd probably get hunted down by Adobe. But what we're basically gonna do with this is drag it into our program files location or our applications folder on our Mac. And since this folder contains the flame deco script somewhere in here, when we run that flame action, it is going to reference this folder in your applications folder. So I already have Adobe Photoshop 2023, obviously, but if you don't, then all you have to do is take this folder and drag it into your applications folder on your Mac, which can be found right here. I believe by default, the applications is in your, your favorites bar, but if not, just search up the, where the folder is on your computer. It's where all your other Adobe apps are gonna be. So just drag this folder into the applications folder and you should be good to go. Since I am on a Mac, I can't exactly show you how to install this on a PC, but I do have this photo right here that I took of my PC. And this is basically the location that you're gonna wanna drag your workaround fix to. So if you're on PC, just open up the workaround fix PC folder and you're gonna drag this Adobe Photoshop 2023 folder into your program files slash Adobe. And this should be where, again, all your other Adobe products are, all your other Adobe folders. I already had Adobe Photoshop 2023 installed, but let's say you have 2015, as it says right here. You're just gonna drag that into the same folder and you will end up with this Adobe Photoshop 2023 folder. And that way, when you run the action in Photoshop, it will reference the script, the flame script from the 2023 folder. 
I hope that wasn't too confusing. So just to break that down again, the problem is most likely to do with your flame, your flame script not being in the file path that's that's specified in the action. So how you test that is go to one of the pyro actions in the actions folder and open it up and check if this flame, once you open up this little flame part of the action, if it says the deco script is not found. That just means that the script is not at the specified location, which I just showed you where to put it. So if this is showing up for you, just follow what I just did and put it if you're on your Mac in your applications folder and if you're on PC in your program files slash Adobe folder. So that's pretty much it. I really appreciate you guys for watching and supporting as always. Again, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Peace.